This is the Great North Wrestling Podcast, the official podcast of the Hannibal TV, Canada's number one pro wrestling YouTube channel, with your host, three-time Canadian champion and GNW lead reporter, Devin Hannibal Nicholson. This is Hannibal from TheHannibalTV.com, and our special guest for the Great North Wrestling Podcast tonight is three-time WWE Tag Team Champion, former WCW Hardcore Champion, and I hate to say it, but he's the reigning Great North Wrestling Canadian Champion, Quebecer Pierre, a.k.a. Jean-Pierre Lafitte, and I've been asked to interview him by the president of Great North Wrestling. Uh, it's not doing this out of the goodness of my heart. So uh, here he is, Quebecer Pierre. But uh, don't worry, uh, the dead dealer. Uh, we're not going to talk about us. We're going to talk about what's going on right now in the wrestling world. Yes, because we definitely have some unfinished business to take care of, but I have Haku ahead of me in the immediate future in Brockville, May the 12th, and you have Jeremy Prophet. You're defending the title against him. So if you can get through Prophet, who knows, maybe uh, the president will be nice enough to give me a rematch. I don't know, maybe May 25th in Pembroke, maybe August 4th in Ottawa. We'll have to wait and see, but that's not what... I have to talk to you about today. Uh, let's start it off. For some reason, I guess it was... Uh, well, actually, not for some reason. I'll give you the credit. You are a great wrestler. And uh, apparently, people have been talking all over the internet, including uh, the Wrestling Observer, top wrestling news sites, that you had the best uh, non-WWE match of WrestleMania weekend. So wh what are your thoughts on that? Uh I was pretty, it's pretty overwhelming, uh, everything that's happening since that match. Uh, I didn't have the chance to uh, watch the match myself. I had the, you know, uh, the chance to be right in the middle of the ring and to live the moment, you know, as I was going, you know. Uh, but it was, it was great, you know. It was a great, awesome feeling to be right in the middle of New Orleans um, and having everybody cheered for PCO or, you know, most of the crowd, uh, maybe not at the beginning of the match, but certainly by after the pinfall when I got my hand uh, raised, 90% uh, of, the, of the crowd was cheering PCO, PCO, PCO. And it's like if I, it's like like yeah, I was gaining a fan every second or every thirty second of the match, uh, just you know, fighting uh, a true battle, you know, a true um, all all the elements were there to have a, a five star match, a lot of. Uh, powerful uh, moves on each side, uh, a lot of high-flying, a lot of uh, taking a risk on my part. And um, I did see the uh, clip of your moonsault to the outside, which is, uh, I was shocked to see that actually, um, that you actually risked your life to... Uh, do a moonsault to the outside uh, where there was no padding on the floor. So I, I think you have a few screws loose to be pulling off stuff like that. <laughs> uh, well, uh, that's it's just that's how I am. Like for me, it was WrestleMania. Uh, all the industry, all the scouts, all the um, influent people from the business, they were all there in the stands. And, uh, you know, like, I just had to, to be special. I had to, to bring, you know, that passion to the, to show my passion for this business, to show my passion for, for what I want to accomplish in this business and for what I wanted, uh, since age 14 to accomplish in this business. And, uh, this show in particular, uh, I was able to to connect with the crowd and to 
transmit or to transfer uh, to the crowd my passion. Uh, uh, it was like, uh, uh, like uh, I think it was Rocky IV where, you know, he's fighting in Russia and then uh, nobody like, you know, really cares about Rocky, but showing the heart and showing the, the will and showing the, the guts to fight and to go toe-to-toe uh, just gained, you know, uh, everybody by the end of the match and uh, it ended up in a, with a standing ovation. So uh, that, that was a great, I would say, one of the greatest moments of my career uh, on top with uh, uh, maybe Jacques' retirement match, uh, Bret Hart uh, in your house and a Raw match and a couple of other great matches what yeah. about winning the tag team titles one or any yeah. of those three times? Well, this one is different because uh, we're further in the time. We're in 2018. And um, to be able to steal the show, uh, uh, it, just, it just, you know... 15 goes, years later, which is incredible. Yeah, and it, it just goes to show that... Uh, you know, if you work out hard and you do the right things and and then uh, you eat the right things and you you do everything in your in your best efforts to to get better and you really discipline and consistent about it. It's like yeah, there's no you know there's no night uh, that I'm gonna be off. Like, I've had so many people calling me, go, asking me going go for a, a drink and things like that. And I've, I've been polite with them, but I, I've told them, listen, I have to deliver a performance tomorrow. Thanks for the invitation, but i got to stay focused. And that's been my, that's been my focus, that, you know, since I, I came back in GNW, but you've getting better and better match after match after match. And uh, that match was certainly one of the most important ones in my career, in my life. And uh, being able to, been able to deliver it that night uh, just created a crazy madness uh, on my Twitter account, on my Facebook, on my bookings, and... And several high-profile wrestlers, too, such as Justin Credible, I noticed, said you were his new favorite wrestler or something along those lines. Yeah, he said that. He called me up. He said my uh, everything that I was doing was pretty cool. Um, I've been trying to get, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I know he's, he's, he's going through some tough times, so... Uh, I, I call him once in a once in a while, text him and make sure that he's doing okay, that he's fine. He's having a rough time, but uh, that was certainly uh, great to have him say, you know, what he said on my Twitter account. And uh, uh, like he said, he said, you know, we were never like great friends, but we never had any issue, and we always had good matches, me and him together. Because so, uh, you challenged him for the ECW title yeah, uh, when he was okay. ECW champion for people that don't yeah. know. Yeah, and that was, you know, that was uh, another another good... Uh, I'll put this match with the other ones up there, but not as as important as the, the one against Walter uh, on the Joy Janela Spring Break 2. Uh, that, was, uh, that was awesome. It was like... Uh, I just crazy it's just uh, it's hard to explain it's, 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 I've, uh, I've lived a lot of great great moments in my life but this one was really really special and you mentioned there was WWE scouts in the audience did you have any connection with any of those WWE scouts I I, I, I didn't have any connections with the scouts but I had you know a lot of the boys from the, the regular rosters uh, that I've been in touch with, but they've been, uh, you know, telling me uh, that they were watching some, some of my clips and some of my uh, promos and uh, um, um, that, that they wanted to be there. So, um, so uh, I, I didn't 
follow up on everything. Uh, I started to ask, you know, were you there? Did you watch my match and things like that? But uh, I, I got a, a lot of feedback from from the regular roster too. So I figure if the regular roster, uh, some of the guys that I know pretty well, um, uh, they know what I've been doing or what I was doing and the promos that I was doing and everything. Um, people in the office, they have they, this certain media watch the match. That's that's what I'm thinking. You know, it's, there, there's no other way around it. You, know, you, you can't you can't have something so uh, with so many media's around and so publicized by many great um, uh, marketing piece, you know, uh, great videos and great indie guys that, that were booked on the show that um, it was pretty much the big the big show of all the indie shows. It was the, the best-selling shows of all the indie shows during the... Oh, really? So it had a bigger crowd than uh, the TNA versus Lucha Underground, which took place... Either the night before or night after, I forget. And ROH and TNE and all those shows. Really? The biggest crowd of all, all of them. Wow. Yeah. Any feedback from Impact now that I, I believe uh, Scott Demore was booking when you worked for TNA a long time ago? So I. Well, I'm a good friend with, uh, with Jack and Don Callis, and uh, we met for... Uh, a good 10, 15 minutes. Uh, we had a long conversation. Uh, um, I'm not the type of guy that, uh, um, you know, that asking for, for a job. Uh, and that's not where, really where I want to be. I mean, I don't know. If an offer would come, I would take it in consideration, but, uh, uh, my main goal, my main focus is to, uh, to go to PWG. Uh, that's that's my goal. As, really? As right now, yeah. Above I, Impact, above WWE, above New Japan, Pro Wrestling Gorilla, right? Wrestling Gorilla, yeah. Sorry. But I, I don't say I'd be there for a year, but I want to have the chance to live that. California. Well, that's very interesting. And I got to ask you, since you were very well known for being uh, WWE Tag Team Champions, is I believe you held titles for much of your WWE run um, during your first run as the Quebecers. Um, what did you think of WWE having the kid become one of the Tag Team Champions at WrestleMania? Uh there's so many things that I, that I could judge or say, but I'm not in the meetings with them. Uh, the way I look at it, uh, they wanted basically to show that Braun by himself could be two guys. Uh, to me, that was a push to Braun, but it was for one night only because they have to uh, gaze back the belts, I guess because the kid has to go to school. And uh, it's just sometimes, I guess, it's hard to understand why they, why they do things like that, but they must have a reason. I mean, they probably spent over a million dollars on the guy flipping, you know, semis and ambulance and having winch and having towing and scrapping, you know, uh, uh, fifty thousand, seventy-five thousand dollar semi, or uh, fifty thousand dollar ambulance, and a bunch of other things that they've done to to make him a monster. And then you go to WrestleMania with maybe your son, or I don't know, your nephew. It has to be someone, maybe was it. I don't know. I was just saying like that. Uh, maybe uh, a special kid from uh, after was a little disease or uh, something. 
I don't know. There, there, there's probably something behind that, that. It ended up being a refer. It was one of the referee's sons, John Cohen's okay. son. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, like I said, uh, it's hard, you know, like, because we're not there. And the thing with wrestling is like uh, we're watching the show now, the WrestleMania show now, or we're watching Raw tonight. But they probably know where they want to be with Braun in six months. And we don't know where they want him to be in six months. And that's taking in consideration that they know what they're doing. So uh, it's hard to judge when you don't have the end of the story or the prolongement of the story in front of your eyes where they're going with it. But I can tell you something. He did uh, spend... A ton of money on this guy, and uh, I hope they'll be able to make it back, to the, the, make it back on their investment. One thing I think was really bad for him was uh, I haven't really seen much of him because I don't watch the the product, but I did see the the cl- the clip on Twitter was when Brock nailed him with a couple legitimate punches to the face, and he just basically ate the punches did nothing in retaliation. So I don't know how good that is for his reputation. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why, too. Uh, was it Brock uh, pissed off or was it... I think he stiffed Brock or something. But my, my thing is, what would Braun have had to lose if he had retaliated? Because it would have been broken up or maybe he would have got knocked out. You never know, but at least it would have shown that, okay, I'll stand up to this guy that's punching me full force in the face. Yeah, I haven't uh, seen that yet, so uh, uh, I really... I guess I, it happened at the Royal Rumble. Oh, uh, okay. So, so uh, I uh, I wasn't aware of that. And, uh, I don't know how they, they play that off, you know. And, and I don't know the whole confusion with uh, um, Brock and Vince. The, I think the... They had a big argument over something, and uh, it was almost done that uh, Brock was leaving WWE, but I don't know where they're at with all that, so I really don't know. I didn't follow up on that that much, you know. Well, I think Dana had announced before WrestleMania that he was going back to UFC, so at that point, WWE would have had to do something because everyone was going to think that he was going to drop the title. So apparently there's some short-term deal in place. But I'll ask you one more question about the tag team titles before I get off that subject. Would yeah. Jacques have agreed to lose to a fourth grader? Because we all know how how he could be sometimes if you guys were the tag team champions and Vince had come up uh, with that idea. I guess he would have said... Uh while we're doing a job, we're going to be professional, but we're going to give our notice after the match. <laughs> <laughs> that's, for, that's probably what he would, uh, he would say. That's, that's, because I, he never was really bad business. He would never like refuse to do a job before, but if he didn't like it or didn't like, uh, or if it wasn't what it was promised or what it was planned and there was a change of plan and something would happen like that at the last, um, you know, in the morning of the show. Uh, basically, that's what he wanted to do when, but that's what he did when we were supposed to have a big win over the, um, the men on a mission at WrestleMania. And uh, when they said there was going to be a, a double can out, uh, he wanted to just do the the thing, the double can out, and just leave our our notice and just left the company. Uh, but you know, the WWE felt like you know all my my teenage time. You know, uh, it was my my company, my my dream. Uh, I wasn't a big WCW fan or a big NWA fan or. AWA fan, it was a big WWE fan, so uh, f- uh, for me it felt like, you know, I'm, I'm, it took me so many years to, 
to be close to Vince, to be close to Pritchard, to be close to Jim Ross, to be close to J.J. Dillon, to be close to all the uh, influence people uh, on the uh, executive WWE, you know. And it was like going to another company. It was really starting from scratch when I made my name there. It took so many matches and so much time you know and so much work into it just to you know to get known and to get noticed by the big names that are running the company uh i never crossed my mind to to leave wwe to to go somewhere else because of one thing like that but uh then after that another thing started to fall into another thing and of course i made some um, bad decision and uh, bad calls and I was probably not uh, the best politician um, after after a while but just just guess I'm just gonna put that on uh, not having enough experience or just being very young and being put on a very good spot at a very young age and uh, it's kind of tough you know you, 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 if I look at Kevin Owens you know he, he got there at what 32 33 well I got there maybe 10 years before him you know so it's uh it's a huge difference in the, the maturity and, in, and in the way that you see life and the way that you you look at uh, the, your career right? when you're so young you, you, you don't know that you know runs go by waves and that uh, you're running a wave and this wave now it finishes up and then uh, if you're you know lucky enough you're gonna, you're gonna hop up on another wave but it may take some time before the other wave comes around so you have to do some cruising and uh, if you're not aware of all that you, you just, you know, you're just thinking for yourself and you're not seeing the big pictures and then you're making bad decisions. So it's just a, just a learning process, a learning experience. That's that's what it was, basically. It was just, uh, just kind of young and innocent and uh, just trying to do my best by myself. And I know for a point in time, uh, you, you knew Jeff Jarrett pretty well. Um, through Puerto Rico and TNA, and you may have been in WWE at the same time. Are you surprised that uh, they decided to put him in the Hall of Fame this year? Uh, um, yeah, because it was the, uh, the, the number one position for a while. Uh, but another way, I'm not surprised, because the way I look at the Hall of Famer, the way the Hall of Fame works... Uh, they were in New Orleans, uh, just from Andersonville, Tennessee, which is not too far from there. And the way I look at it, every time they're they're uh, putting people in the Hall of Fame, they're around that area where they run the WrestleMania show. So uh, I think it made sense. And that one thing that I've got to say about Vince. Uh, He's not really uh, 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 well, uh, a guy. He's going to go for business first. You know, if it's good for business, he's going to put the... Uh, he, he proved it with Eric Bischoff, with Paul Eamon. Uh, he worked with all those guys, even though they were a competition for him, and they, they were like a like a, some sort of threat for his company and he was capable of of bringing them aboard and having them to work for him and i think that's what he's doing with jeff you know uh he's you know just a good uh, good iq wrestling and you never know where it's gonna go but it always starts with something and just the fact that uh jeff was introduced uh, it's well deserved too. You know, he did a lot in the business and did a lot for WWE. He was uh, many time Intercontinental uh, Champion, 
and he was world champion. Uh, he's been on every kind of angle. He's, he's, he's been always, always a, a, a real good uh, businessman from, from what I heard. Um, I know when how to deal with his things with the office. And uh, he's been nothing... He's been nothing else than a gentleman to me, Joe Jarrett. Um, I don't have any anything bad to say about the guy. He's been great to me the, since I've known him, uh, working with him, against him, uh, for him, uh, all phases of, of life that I met him, uh, uh, his real personal life, you know, with the last of his wife, unfortunately, and um, he's been real human, you know, so uh, for me, uh, it was a great addition to the Hall of Fame of the WWE, so I'm not, I'm not shocked, I'm not surprised, uh, just like Brett was introduced in the Hall of Fame, I mean, it's been so, so much going on, but I think Vince knows how to... Uh, Kind of bring back all his, uh, when I use the word, the word, uh, children, but all his talent, you know, back, back home. I think that's, uh, and I, good seem, I seem to recall that you said, uh, he was quite an interesting fellow, Jeff Jarrett, to go out and party with, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, he was, uh, he, I, didn't, I didn't party much with Jeff. Uh, I saw him a few times. Uh, he, was, he was fun. It was fun to be around. He was not a troublemaker. He wasn't someone who was looking for a fight or, you know, he was just fun to be around. He's just, just a good guy. You know, I just, I just like him. Like, uh, he's been always very, very good to me. Very nice, very polite. Um, when he when I found out that he was the the new owner of Global, and that he was taking over uh, TNA, I sent him an email and uh, he responded right away and uh, was wishing me uh, you know all the best and asking me if I was well and everything. So he's been nothing but very professional to me. So it's it's, uh, yeah, it's great and I think. Uh, like I said, he knows how to deal, you know, his business. And I, I just think uh, we finally got along, you know, him and Vince, and they, they were uh, able to, uh, to bury any uh, bad blood and, and be able to uh, go on and do this thing. Now, the reason I was asked to do this interview with you today was because coming up in less than a month now, May the 12th, you're going to have your first match inside of a mixed martial arts cage, not a wrestling ring. And it's not going to be like, I guess they had a kind of an MMA show, WrestleMania weekend, that was just basically a wrestling ring without the ropes. I think a guy yeah. that you're, who, you're wrestling this guy in, in June, right? What's his name again that ran that show? Yeah, Matt Riddle from Matt the Riddle. Yeah, they tried to do like a, a blood port, sport type thing, but it was still a, a ring with a spring in it, basically. But this is going to be a real uh, mixed martial arts cage, and you're going up against two-time Canadian champion and longest reigning Canadian champion, uh, Jeremy Prophet, and he's been training with David L uh, Loiseau, I think, yeah. in, in Montreal in MMA, but you've been training... Um, in MMA as well, so it's going to be a best two out of three falls match. And Prophet did beat you last September in Napanee, so it's going to be a very interesting match. I know he wants to become a three-time Canadian champion. Um, so, what, what are your thoughts on that match? Well, I, I, th I think Prophet uh, wants to kind of cut the waves that I'm running. You know, like. Uh, Everything's going well for me, but I've been putting a lot of efforts into it. I've been, you know, doing a lot of things that maybe others don't do. Um, I have totally confidence in my uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. 
uh, totally confident in my striking. And, uh, you know, I know what the feeling is when you uh, enter the cage because, you know, I've won two gold medals uh, at the Montreal uh, BJJ Open tournament. So, uh, you know, I was facing guys from pretty much all over the province and uh, ended up with a gold medal uh, 2014-2018. So, um, I guess, you know, uh, pretty confident coming out of that uh, big match, you know, at Georgia and Spring Break 2. Um, got a bunch of other uh, uh, high-quality match, you know, coming up. Uh, You're wrestling in Oregon or something. My, yeah, Matt Riddle is one of them. So for me, um, Prophet, uh, respect him a lot. It's not going to be easy. He's got a lot of skills. He's quick. He's fast. But uh, unfortunately for himself, uh, he's got to face uh, a much, much better PCO than he faced when he beat me the first time. And um, it's like uh, everything's been so different uh, in the last two months. Uh, it's like I'm gaining, you know, an edge every day, every week. Uh, um, my mentality is, is almost like being a primate fill, and, you know, it's like I got that uh, instinct animal. You know, I've been trained with uh, one of the greatest coach that I never had before, which is... Uh, um, Mike and Destroyer Roy um, and uh, you know he's, he's one of the strongest men if not the strongest man with his hands in the world and uh, he's been training me so um, so it's a total different game now uh, of course you know, we're not going to have keys the, the grip's going to be it's not going to be such a factor as when you, you, you're fighting with a gi, but, you know, I also do train no gi, so um, he, he's going to feel the power of my hands for sure. I mean, when I when I put my hands together and I decide to to choke, to grip, to arm bar, to, to knee bar, to, uh, to shoulder lock, to uh, wrist lock, uh, whatever the move may come, you know, I'll probably, uh, you know, work at something where he's going to think I'm going to go when I'm coming in and, and I'll probably end up uh, maybe on an ankle or something where he's not thinking that I'm going to go. And uh, I, I speci I'm specialized in, in two, three different submissions, you know, when I roll with guys in the gym. And uh, I know where I'm strong at, and that's that's what I want to really uh, uh, try to uh, explore. You know, like try to to make him go where I want him to go, and trap him somewhere, and make him submit. You know, but I've got to do this. I've got to do it twice, which is uh, which is pretty normal. And like when you when you do those those tournaments. It's always a two out of three falls or a double elimination. Sometimes you can fight eight times, ten times. And uh, sometimes when you're in the final, it's the best out of the three uh, falls. So, uh, Unless, of course, you break his arm on the first submission and he can't continue. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an Which is what I'm going to plan to do to Haku, even though it's not two out of three falls. I actually plan on... Uh, Hurting him really bad to make a name for myself. Actually, actually, that's going to be a hell of a main event there. You and Aku, you know, maybe I have unsettled business with you, but I got to give you what, what you've got. And uh, you're, you know, you're a hell of a fighter, and Aku's got his reputation made for himself. And uh, may the best man win, you know, to... Uh, uh, to be a man, you gotta beat the man, and I think uh, if you can accomplish that, well, uh, it's 
going to be a lot, a lot of uh, fire on our feud uh, that's going to continue later. But like I said, we're not there yet. I'm holding grudge against you for different reasons. But my goal right now is Jeremy Prophet. I got to submit him twice. Got to get rid of him. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to spend, you know, uh, six months uh, fighting with him. Uh, and he's probably thinking the same thing, you know, the same way that I, I'm thinking. Well, we're fighters, you know. That you know, we're always uh, looking for the bigger fish. For you know, trying to get on top of the chain food. And that's just part of the process, you know, that's just part of it, you know, like, even though I'm holding the belt, uh, the GMW Canadian Heavyweight Championship belt, to me, uh, yes, I'm proud of, of, of that accomplishment, but it doesn't mean anything to me as far as I have, you're as good as your last match. So every time that I step into a ring or an octagon or, a cage, um, I always have to remember that I'm as good as my last match. I always have the pressure, I always have the, uh, the, the, I need to perform, and uh, it's always there, you know. Uh, I don't want to let the fans down, I don't want to let uh, anyone down, and I'm, I'm raising that bar really high up. And uh, I need to perform. And uh, that's what I'm totally focused on. And just perform and get results. Perform and get results. Train, 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 train. And just, you know, like Bruce Lee said, you know, you, you, you can know a thousand olds, but if you practice them only one time each it's not worth anything you better know maybe 10 holes but practice them 10,000 times each and then you'll be much more dangerous and so that's basically the way I look at my trainings you know and that's one thing that I will agree with you on I will 100% agree with you on that that's why um, if I'm ruling I can beat a black belt or several degree black belt because I know several holds and I am the master of those holds it doesn't matter what degree you are I have mastered certain holds and it's very difficult to get out of them and I'm sure as you said I know it from first hand experience you know what you're doing in the ring but fans if you're interested in coming to the Brockville Cage Wars 2 event Brockville is right across the border from Watertown New York not very far from Cornwall not very far from Kingston or Ottawa it's very central so I suggest you come out Advanced tickets start at only $12 each, or you can buy four for $40 through ticketweb.ca or at the score locations in Brockville, Smith Falls, or Kempville. You can pick tickets up at those locations or ticketweb.ca. Quebecer Pierre is also going to be in Pembroke Friday night, May 25th. Tony Atlas is going to be at that event. And that's going to be a huge event, very special, because tickets are only going to be $5 for adults and $2 for kids 16 and under. And tickets for that are available at the Pembroke Memorial Center reception or at the door. And further down the road in Ottawa, August 4th, we'll be back at the Earl Armstrong Arena. Uh, both Quebec Pierre and I are uh, signed for that event, but more information on that event will come after the May events take place and uh, we see how everything shapes up but I hope that I get another shot at that Canadian title soon and any anyone listening to this who has just discovered Quebec or Pierre and wants to see um, a lot of his matches that we have on the Hannibal TV um, search Quebec or Pierre the Hannibal TV and there'll be a whole list of some of the great matches uh, Quebec or Pierre has had for Great North Wrestling and uh, if he wants to tell us his uh, social media for anyone that wants to follow it yeah on Twitter it's at uh, uh, at uh, PCO uh, Quebecer 
you can uh, follow me on Twitter, on uh, Facebook at uh, PCO Style, and I got my another Facebook it's PCO Pierre Caldwell Lab, and uh, on Instagram at PCO Style Thirty. So uh, I'm pretty much on all the platforms, and uh, also. I'd like to uh, remind the people that last year uh, I was not on that show, but but the Cage War One was a huge success, and uh, with the card that has been put on by the commissioner, uh, this is a crazy, crazy uh, top card, and uh, I think that uh, everybody should try to attempt. Uh, to be present and to be there and to witness, um, you know, great fighter fighting, you know, for their pride, fighting for a title, fighting for a reputation, fighting for something that they're really, uh, you know, uh, that's really important to them and to their uh, reputation. So that's going to be a hell of a night, that's for sure. And it's not a wrestling ring, folks. This is a legitimate MMA cage. There's no spring in it. Uh, the padding is very hard. So this is uh, only the tough guys have agreed to uh, compete on this show. And girls, we have Laurel Van Ness, a.k.a. Chelsea Green, who is going to be making her Great North Wrestling debut. Um, former Impact Wrestling Knockouts champion taking on Lady Yasmin for the Women's Championship of Canada. So that's going to be an amazing match, and uh, there's going to be meet and greets as well. Um, so again, all the information for upcoming events are at greatnorthwrestling.ca, thehannibaltv.com. And to close this off, I know Jeremy Prophet's going to listen to this, and I'm actually going to be talking to Jeremy Prophet soon. So is there any uh, message you want to give to Jeremy Prophet about Cage Wars 2 May 12th in Brockville to close this interview off? Well, well Jeremy Prophet just got to know that uh, as, uh, right now I'm probably uh, the, the, the hardest thing on, on pro wrestling. I'm on a winning streak uh, since uh, probably uh, 2017. You know, I've been like making damage all over the place. I've uh, been collecting uh, a lot of belts from different promotions. Uh, I've been all over the United States. I've uh, been all over Canada. Uh, I'm making a living out of wrestling, you know, every weekend. Uh, I don't have any other jobs. That's my job. That's, that's me. I'm a pro wrestler. And uh, I, I, I just, just be ready because I'm such on a winning streak with confidence. Uh, in my skills, confidence in my martial arts, confidence uh, on on everything that I've been touching, you know, it's been turning into gold. So uh, you're going to have to come up with uh, your best performance ever in life to be able to uh, go through me or submit me or even beat me. Uh you know, uh, may the best man win, but, you know, uh, I wouldn't bet on yourself. I'll be there in Brock, in Brockville. I'll perform, and I'll promise everyone that wants to meet and greet with me, I'll give you my time. And uh, if it takes two hours, if it takes one hour uh, after the show, I'll be available to sign, to, to talk, to answer your question, and I will, uh, I will totally be, uh, you know, uh, free to access to, to all of you. So just, just be patient and uh, enjoy the show, and I'll be, uh, I'll be there for you. Thank you for listening to the Great North Wrestling Podcast. Subscribe to this podcast on iTunes and subscribe to the Hannibal TV on YouTube for all the latest GNW news and videos. Follow at Devin Hannibal on Twitter and check out our website at thehannibaltv.com. Are you ready? Great North.
www.pro-wrestling.ca returns to Brockville for Cage Wars 2. Pro Wrestling in an MMA cage. Featuring the legendary Haku of WWE and WCW fame versus three-time Canadian champion Hannibal. And title matches featuring three-time WWE tag champion Quebecer Pierre and former TNA Impact stars Wes Briscoe and Laurel Van Ness. Advanced tickets start at just $12 at ticketweb.ca and all score locations.